Okay, so this is going to be a review on two products I've used quite a bit. The first one is the Thermarest Prolite. It is roughly 20 inches wide by 72 inches long, so about 6 feet. It is curved to save a little bit of weight. Uh, personally, I don't really like that, but whatever. On the bottom side, it's this gray green color. On the top, it's an orange. It packs down rather small. Uh, its pack down size is about about four inches, almost exactly four inches by ten, about ten inches. Um, so about four by four by ten. Um, very very close to the size of like a clean canteen, it's a 40 ounce clean canteen. The weight on it is, uh, it's one pound one ounce but I have this elastic bungee so it's pretty much exactly a pound. Um, a lot of people don't understand how you use self inflating, therm uh, just self inflating pads in general but therm rust is what we're talking about. Uh, I just got back from a trip that's why it's still packed up. But in storage you do not leave it pack like this, uh, kind of the same concept as sleeping bags. You don't leave them rolled up, you leave them inflated with a valve open. And the reason behind that is that air is used to being full, or sorry, that foam core is used to being full of air. So then when you do roll it down, pack it, get to where you're going and open it up, that foam starts expanding because it has a memory effect, starts expanding which entail sucks air in to the mattress. Um, a lot of people don't understand that and a lot of people say yeah thermos suck because they don't self inflate. So I'm going to unpack this one. Unpack really easy. Unfold it. Open the valve up. And while that one's inflating I'm going to talk to you about the other one. This is a Thermarest Z Light. Uh, this one I haven't had as long. I've just had it, I don't know, six months or so. Um, it is a closed cell foam pad, so an advantage to it is you don't have to worry about puncturing it. Uh, another thing you don't have to worry about is it soaking up with water. Uh, the advantage of this is you can put it straight on the ground, you don't have to worry about rocks or debris or branches poking a hole in it, which in a lot of cases is advantageous depending on your terrain. Same concept is it's reliable. In the middle of the night you don't have to worry about well what if this pops and what if this goes flat on me and everything. Uh, you don't have to worry about, like you don't have to carry a repair kit, you don't have to worry about it getting a puncture, you, you don't really have to worry about it all that much. And because of that, it is, yes, it's bulky, but because it is durable, um, this just straps the outside of your pack. Uh, that way it doesn't take internal pack space. Um, and if it gets bumped around a little bit, you know, just call them battle, battle scars. Um, this one is exactly 20 inches by uh, 5 inches by... Um, five and a half. So it's five and a half inches this way. I believe I want to say there's eleven of these panels. Uh, some ultra lighters they cut some. They use an exacto knife and they cut some of these panels out to save weight. Again, I don't really see the benefit of that, but also I'm not an ultra lighter. Um, this one, why I like it more than the foam pads that you roll up is it doesn't have a memory effect, and it's easy to deploy and uh, close up and as a lot of people know the foam pads that you roll up the ones you get from Walmart the blue ones whatever pretty much any foam pad when it's rolled up then when you unroll it has a memory effect and it will roll up on the ends this does not have that okay um it is roughly three quarters of an inch thick this one when fully inflated is an inch thick when it comes to R values, um, this I want to say has an R value of like 2.5 and this has an R value of like 2. 
but they're pretty close. One other thing I want to touch on when it, it comes to any type of sleeping pad is if you read comments on like anywhere, people buy a pad like this or like this, they sleep on it and they say, yeah, it keeps me warm, yeah, it insulates me, but I'm a side sleeper and it's uncomfortable and it hurts my hips. These are meant to be lightweight and packable and they are meant to protect you from, they're, they're meant to protect, uh, insulate you from the cold ground. They are not meant for comfort. You're not going to sleep as comfortably on this as you will a certain mattress that you have at home. There's no way around it. They do make some thermorest which is like three and a half, four, five inches thick, but they're super big and bulky and nobody backpacks with them. They're big, bulky, and they weigh six pounds, and they're expensive. They might be warm, but like they're six pounds, five pounds, I don't even know, eight pounds, whatever. These two I have here are not meant for comfort. They are meant for insulation from the ground. A lot of people don't understand this concept, but when you use a sleeping bag, I don't have one here for demonstration. When you use a sleeping bag, the reason the sleeping bag is warm is because of dead airspace. That's insulation. All the puffiness. The fact of the matter is when you're laying on the insulation, on the bottom of your sleeping bag, that insulation is compressed. It's still insulating you slightly, but because it's compressed, it's suddenly not as warm and not as it's not working as well as the top part is. Because the top, um, gravity is only pressing down on it. On the bottom, uh, however much you weigh, uh, 200 pounds. That 200 pounds is flattening that insulation on the bottom of your sleeping bag like a pancake. Um, because of that fact, that's why I use the sleeping pad. These you put weight against them and they don't compress all that much. So it keeps you off the ground and it's insulation. So whenever you talk to people or you read reviews or whatever and they say, well, like this one isn't comfortable, this one isn't comfortable, I want whatever. Um, there are some pads that are more comfortable than these for like the same weight. For example, the Thermarest Neo Air, which I have used, is comfortable. It feels kind of like you're floating on air in a way. Um, and it is comfortable. It The one I was using, it didn't offer a lot of insulation. It was just filled with air. It had an R rating of about R2, which like the same as both these. So they were more comfortable, but Number one, they were full of air. Um, these at least have a foam core, so if they do puncture, you still have some value. And number two, whenever you'd move around, it would crinkle. It sounded like you had a Mylar space blanket and you're like um, crinkling it all night. And it's annoying to you and to others, it's annoying. That's why I don't like a lot of the Neo Air and just the air filled pads. Uh, the, the other thing is, not all of them. But some of the, like, say the Neo Air or the X-Ped mats or whatever, they're thicker, but surprisingly they don't have that much hot, higher of an R value than this, or than this. Um, and then, like, the other thing is R value and insulation below you is good, but like I said, earlier it, none of these pads are going to be they're not going to feel like you're sleeping on a mattress you might not sleep as well that's just part of sleeping outside and camping almost 95 percent chance you're not going to sleep as soundly and as well as if you're on a mattress um so take that into account these are insulation only. I'm not saying they're not comfortable. I, I can sleep on the bare ground and be comfortable. These, like to me, they give me pretty much all the comfort that I want. Um, but that's a fringe benefit. But their main purpose is number one, especially these, in case wa um, water seepage. If you're camping on snow or whatever and your body heat escaping, melting the snow and the snow leaking in your sleeping bag. So that's one benefit. The other benefit is um, it's getting you off the ground and it's insulation. Um, 
more efficiently than the fluffy the fluffiness of the bottom of your sleeping bag so like I said if you're looking for this uber comfortable sleeping pad blah 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 these are not it these are just everyday um, especially this one super durable you don't have to worry about punctures or whatever um, they aren't really designed to be comfortable but if you want comfort expect to pay more money and expect to carry more weight um, with that being said maybe some of you guys were watching this uh, this pad and flate I can tell it has a little bit of air in it but again because it was packed up for a long time um, it's not doing it as fast as normal There you go, this one's fully inflated. Um, one last thing you can do is you can stack them. Um, either way, I've heard both ways of working. Sometimes the clothes sell on top, sometimes on the bottom. Either way, you'll get increased comfort and increased insulation. Right here, you're looking at about R5 probably, R4.5. Um, really comfortable. Um, about six feet long so it's a little short for me but this is about as to me this feels kind of like a neo air so uh, you can pack both of these as opposed to a neo air it'll be slightly heavier but if you get a puncture in this one you still have insulation I'm um, talking about punctures with this one this one has seen a lot of use so I'm not saying this is a downside but if you can see that right there okay that little bit of shininess that's a patch of tenacious tape and because I got a puncture in it I got a hole in it um, that's something you have to take into account into account it's not that therm rests are not durable like I said I've used this like a lot this does have a pretty durable material it's like a 50 denier polyester and nylon top and slightly thicker on the bottom um, for better abrasion resistance when I roll it up I roll it with this side facing out for a few reasons number one it doesn't stick out as much it's just a green color instead of bright orange and number two if it rubs against something or poke something in my pack pokes it this side is more durable but like I said I gotta say these are probably two of the best sleeping pads on the market I'm talking about prices real quick I got this one on sale really good sale I got it for like 49 bucks that's part of the reason I bought it um I didn't check prices I know you can get both these on Amazon this one I want to say the foam Z light is about 39 bucks 40 bucks um 40 to 45 they make a few other ones they make one silver one and I think one kind of orange color like this or yellow whatever I'm colorblind um the reason I went with this is it's just an earthy color so it doesn't stand out as much when it's on the ground um, and the other side's a gray color kind of the color concrete um, if you like the bright standout colors um, you can go with one of those other ones I know one of them might have like a mylar backing it might have slightly better R value I don't know I don't really care I got this one part of the reason I got this is because of increased durability and then number two for a long time I was packing around a either a piece of Tyvek or a space blanket tarp the like 5 by 7 mylar uh, sided they're like tarps to as a ground cloth to sleep on and that thing weighs 12 ounces um and it, it with a reflective side up yes it reflects some of your body heat back but it doesn't do all that much it just keeps you dry when I replace it with this, not only does this increase the durability of this pad because this now this pad's off the ground, um, it also increased the insulation and the comfort greatly um, in both the pads. So for about the same weight, I gave up that tarp and I just laid straight on this. I laid this one on top. I know uh, some people have said putting a closed cell on top of the open cell is more efficient. 
But this pad's more durable, so I want that to be on the ground. Um, if I didn't say this pad's an inch thick, this pad is three quarters of an inch. So roughly together, they're close to two inches thick, which is about the height of a lot of those air-filled uh, pads. Um, the Thermarest Pro Light got it on sale. I want to say on Amazon and sporting goods stores, they're between like 90 bucks and or 100 bucks upwards to like maybe 140. They make different sizes. They make, I think, a three footer, a four footer, and they make a six foot six model that is five inches wider. Don't quote me on that, but with all their pads, they tend to make all those sizes. It's the small, medium, large torso, regular, and large. A uh, large torso is normally four feet by 25 inches wide. Um, but like I said, especially if you're in the uh, backpacking, this might not please some ultralight uh, backpackers, but the fact of the matter, both these together weigh slightly under two pounds, which for a sleeping pad is kind of heavy. But like I said, increased comfort. This is multi-use. Uh, uh, you can, ha uh, if you want to sit down on the trail real quick, um, you want to sit down on the trail real quick, what you can do is, I forget how I did this, um, you can, sit like that, pretty thick seat, you can sit on it just like this, you're not going to break it, it will compress a little bit. Um, I have, and a benefit of this, which seems stupid, nobody talks about, but if this is strapped to the bottom or top or whatever to your back pack on the outside, depending on how heavy your pack is, this will aid in your pack floating. So everything goes wrong and say your back slips off, falls into a lake or a river, this will actually surprisingly keep it afloat. Um, the other benefit is everyone should know how to swim, but surprisingly you can hold on to this you know, like this, and use it as kind of a floaty, or like a pool toy or whatever, and it will help you, uh, it's not, it's not an alternative to a, uh, like a PFD, uh, a life jacket, a personal flotation device. It's not an alternative to that, but if you're not anticipating being around water and then you find, for whatever reason, you're whatever, you could take this out and, um, hold on to it. It's not the best thing, but again, it is multifunctional. Drowning is a really bad thing, so this could possibly save your life from drowning. It will keep you warm. Both of them will keep you comfortable, more comfortable night's sleep. And one last thing is any sleeping bag that has a temperature rating, they're getting that temperature rating um, that temperature reading will only be accurate if you're using the proper sleeping pad. The reason a lot of sleeping bags, if you use a 20 degree bag without a sleeping pad, you'll probably be cold at 40 degrees or 45 degrees. The reason why is a lot of your heat is just escaping out the bottom of the bag because that's the weak link in the insulation. That's where the ground is a bigger heat sink than you. Uh, you might think you weigh a lot, but the ground weighs a lot heavier. So all your heat's just soaking into the ground. And sometimes I, you know, sometimes it's good for the uh, ground to be warm, but when you're trying to stay warm, that's not the time to do it. So like I said, sleeping pads or t a type of ground insulation is really important. Whenever you get a sleeping bag and it says 20 degrees and you use a system like this, rated to the season, enough insulation, enough comfort, if you have a 20 degree bag sleeping on both these, believe it or not, you'll probably sleep comfortably down to 20 degrees. For example, I reviewed a the Recon 2, um, it's kind of like a snug pack sleeping bag. It's a center zip. You can go check my channel, did a review on it. It's rated to 40 degrees or 41 degrees. I was sleeping on both these for a few nights, got down to 30 degrees and I, I was warm. 
So I was actually sleeping 10 degrees colder than that bag was rated for. I think the main reason was because I was on these two. These two pads here. One last thing. Have, this is the first video that I'm going to do this in, but if you like what you see here, uh, be sure to like, share, subscribe, comment. If you want to see any type of gear reviews, uh, I might have the gear you're looking for. If you have any ideas for videos, uh, pop it in the comments below. Like I said, like, share, subscribe. Tell your friends, tell your family, tell anybody you want. And if you hate this channel or you hate this video, I don't care. Give it a thumbs down, negative comment. All comments are welcome. First Amendment, freedom of speech.